What's going on guys? This is Gene Jensen and it is April. This is my favorite month of the year. This is the month that the big ones get caught all over the country. And I want to talk about the five baits that I'm going to have tied on this month, all month long. Stay tuned. All right, so the very first one I'm going to talk about is one that is near and dear to my heart back in the early days of my filming. It's one of my very first kind of viral videos, the ones that, that kind of got me on the map. But uh, my very favorite bait in April is for covering a lot of water, for uh, finding those fish that are cruising in the shallow water, especially if there's grass in the lake, even if there's not grass in the lake, is going to be a red lipless crankbait. This is a Strike King uh, Red Eye Shad. Just a regular um, rattle trap in a crawfish color. Anything like that. I've got several different types and I'm gonna leave all, everything down in the description so you guys can go find it over on Tackle Warehouse. But uh, definitely a lipless crankbait. The reason being is one, you can cover a lot of water. You can make long casts. You can move it and work it really, really fast. I'm gonna leave a link to the description or to the video that I filmed about it on how to fish it this time of the year. Um, and it is an absolute blast. The rod I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on is going to be the same rod that I'm gonna throw a uh, a chatterbait on, which is the second blood, second one we're gonna talk about. But is is a seven foot three medium heavy moderate okay so a medium heavy moderate is key for this because it gives you enough backbone to get this foot the the hook set but it's got enough flex not enough parabolic para, parabolic bend like get it out parabolic bend to be able to uh to, to keep the fish buttoned because they love to throw lip throw, to toss lip, lipless crankbaits back at you 14 or 15 pound fluorocarbon uh, i'm using um a brazex cigar brazex and then a seven speed reel. I don't like a six speed reel because it's it's just slow. It's just too slow. And an eight speed is just, you tend to work it too fast and the, and the bass aren't quite ready to just really chase after it. So a seven speed reel is about right. Um, and just hold on tight. Oh, it's a lot of fun. So like I said, medium heavy moderate rod, uh, 15 pound test fluorocarbon and a seven speed reel and you're set. So that is a lipless crankbait. So the second one, is actually this color right here is a red i like red and green pumpkin a lot of people will use like um fire craw which is another good color just bright crawfish colored chatterbait um this just happens to be my favorite one this time of the year it just it's a little bit different than the, on these lakes that these, these people are throwing fire fire craw all the time it's just a little bit different in it and it gets bit pretty good but a three eighths to a half ounce chatterbait, uh, same setup as the as a lipless crankbait. Like I, like I said, 15 pound test fluorocarbon, seven speed reel, medium heavy moderate rod, um, and hang on tight. And I'm really liking these casking rods and reels right now. There's my shameless plug. Stay tuned. All right, so the third one is one that I I throw all year long, but it's really good this time of the year, especially if you're in grassy lakes or lakes with a lot of cover. Those bass will get up in that co that grass and in that cover, and they'll spawn, especially that shallow grass. And you want something that you can carefully and easily pull through that grass and pull through that cover that's not going to get hung, but it's got enough oomph behind it to be able to, to get the fish out of the cover. And that is a swim jig. And I'm going to grab a couple of colors, my two favorite colors this time of the year. Okay, so this right here, this is a Buckeye uh, swim jig, and it's in bluegill color, and then some type of a fire craw. This is a, a, um, a Picasso fire, fire craw swim jig, and I love swim jigs just because, like I said, they come through cover, and you can cover a lot of water, and, and I don't particularly like bed fishing, but I, if I'm in an area that has a lot of, or is a bedding area and they're in there spawning, I'm going to throw baits through there that I'm going to get bit. So a swim jig is perfect. Trailer wise, I'm going to, tr I'm going to put a, a Rage Menace trailer on them um, because, and I'm not going to rip the little claws apart. I'm going to put it to where the claws are running this way instead of that way. And I'm not going to rip them apart because that way they swim like a fish and I want it to look like a bluegill definitely now if i'm throwing the red one flip it over rip them apart and it looks like a crawfish swimming plain and simple but i love a a rage menace for that kind of stuff and i don't have my plastics with me because i wasn't planning on doing this video today but I, anyway gonna do it anyway okay so the rod i'm gonna be throwing the rod i'm gonna be throwing a uh 
a swim jig on is a medium heavy fast or a heavy fast rod. Um, I don't want to extra fast. I don't want to be too stiff. I want it to be medium, medium heavy fast so I can have a little bit of flex in it. Um, but 17 to 20 pound test fluorocarbon because again you're ripping the you're getting the fish out of heavy cover and you got to have enough oomph behind it um, to do it. So and then a high speed reel, an eight three to one gear ratio reel or an eight speed reel is ideal for it. Um, you can do a seven. I, I just want an eight. So just in case I, get, I see a cast, I want to make it to, and I've already made another cast. I want to get it in really fast to make the next cast and get it in and make the next cast and just hit pinpoint spots as I'm going along. But a seven speed will work just fine as well. Uh, crank that drag down and get them out of that cover. It's a whole lot of fun. All right, so the next two are the ones that I'm going to fish when the males get up shallow and start making beds and the females move up in and they're getting ready and they're cruising around and they're getting ready to spawn. Um, the very first one is some type of a wake bait. Now I'm pulling this one out of the package just so I can remember the name of the company, but I want to highlight this company. This is called Rod Benders Fish, Rod Bender Fishing. And uh, five or six years ago, I was at a trade show in Tennessee, ran into, walked past this, past this little booth with a couple of high school kids that had been custom painting baits and selling them in their booth. And I loved it. I mean, I love to see young guys getting, uh, um, taking the initiative and, and, and trying to build a company like that. Well, fast forward four or five years, and I ran into them in Indiana at a trade show, and they're lots bigger, and they've got tons of different baits, and they're inexpensive. And I'm gonna leave a link to their website down in the description. It's called Rod Bender Baits, but they have some beautiful baits. All right, I had to adjust my autofocus. So that's their bait, right? That's the, the weight bait that I'm gonna show you guys. A crawfish color works good, a bluefish color. The lake that I'm in right now, uh, a shad style with a little bit of orange tends to work the best, but they're beautiful baits. And uh, it's just a couple of young guys just kicking butt and taking names. And it's a whole really cool to see them. And I, and I always I always try to support those kind of companies. But um, this one is uh, dives one, two feet deep. So you get up in these shallows when these males are cruising, looking for bed or these females cruising, looking to spawn, that kind of stuff. Uh, and, and toss it around and, and you can bang it off a cover and all kinds of stuff, but it doesn't dive too deep. And it's perfect for that. So... The rod I'm going to throw it on is going to be a six foot eight. Matter of fact, where's my other jerk bait rod? Nope, this one right here. Yep. My square bill rod. Okay. So it's a six foot eight medium moderate power rod or moderate action rod. And um, I'm going to throw 10 or 12 pound test, usually 12 pound if I'm up shallow around cover and that stuff like that. But 12 pound test fluorocarbon, um, a seven speed reel or six speed reel and i am going to work that thing like there's no tomorrow and it's amazing um it's not just a it's not just a cast and retrieve you cast it out and you want to pop it a little bit while you while you fish it let me throw this square bill now this one fishes a little bit deeper than what i want what i'm talking about me wrapping rods again oh goodness but you're going to cast it out as you're working it along and i'm going to go pop pop and I'm going to work it a little bit like a jerk bait, but just a little pop, just like that. As I'm working it through and around this cover, give it a whole lot of action because all you're trying to do is piss them off. They're not wanting to spot to feed when they're up like that. They're just wanting to get things away from them so they can spawn. And so I'm going to try to do it as, you know, do as many pops and move movements as I can. And what's cool about doing it with a wake bait is you can see the fish come up and grab it, especially if there's a big one. But you got to remember to let them take it. Okay, it's just like a frog bite or top water bite. When you can see the fish take the bait, you've got to let them take it for two seconds, three seconds, and then set the hook. You want to set the hook real light and easy. Um, what I, I went through, yeah, 12 pound test floor I went through all the, the the rods and stuff. Almost forgot. But anyway, so that is a wake bait. Last one. The last one. The last one is one that I'm going to throw around beds all the time, um, whether I can see them spawning or not. Uh, it's something that I figured out, and I'll talk about that in a second. I figured out in Texas years ago, but I'm going to throw a large lizard. This one's already beat up. I've already caught four or five fish off of it, but a Magnum Zoom lizard. I'm going to put a three eighths ounce weight if I'm just dragging it through through beds or through a bedding area and that kind of stuff but one of the things i really like to do is i'll use a a, uh, a 3 16 ounce sinker 
and I will throw it out and I'll just slowly reel it in. We go on all those legs and those arms and that tail and that tail is usually dipped in some chartreuse JJ's magic. Um, when they get up spawning, we're a little bit early for that right now, but I'll dip that tail in some chartreuse JJ's magic to give it that flash and that little bit, that color, that color that they want to see. I'm gonna throw it out there and I'm gonna let it sink to the bottom and I'm just gonna slowly reel it just barely off the bottom. And if, whether you can see the fish or not, whether it is dingy water and you can't see it or whatever, those fish will come unglued to hit a magnum lizard slow rolled through their bedding area. Um, it's perfect. I learned it on Lake Fork years ago when we had a nice big pocket that was full of bedding fish. The only issue was you couldn't see the beds because the water was too muddy. So we just would cast out and slowly reel it back in. So much fun. The rod that I'm going to use though is going to be a medium heavy fast rod. Um, and then when they get, when they bite it, you want to give it to them, count to two seconds and then set the hook. But a medium heavy fast rod because you're going to catch giants on it. I'm going to use a four aught or a five aught hook. And I already talked about the sinker. A high speed reel, eight three to one gear ratio reel or an eight speed reel. And, uh, and hold on tight, man. It is my favorite thing to fish this time of the year. Like I said, I've already jacked a few of them today on it. So, but uh, that's it. That's the five baits for April. You guys get out there, have a lot of fun. This time of the year is when the bank fishermen will catch their biggest fish of the year. The boat fishermen will catch their biggest fish of the year. And the kayak fishermen, well, we're just awesome. <laughs> like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out of the water, go out and catch some fish, and have a great day. We'll see you.